G'day, it's Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series. Today I wanted to talk about probably one of the most important elements that you can take out in the bush or out while you're trekking around in a remote area. It doesn't matter whether you're hiking using a Land Rover or some other four-wheel drive, it is by far the most important. The only other one that's probably slightly more important than it is water. And what we're going to be talking about today is fire and some of the means and some of the equipment that you can take to make fire in your part of the world. This is something I think is actually quite overlooked um, and there are a lot of videos out there on YouTube obviously covering this but I think there's a few little interesting pieces that have been missed along the way. So stay tuned as we've got another interesting video coming up for you. So the biggest thing with starting a fire is obviously what to use. Now depending on what part of the world you're in this will obviously affect what's available uh, to you. Now if we're going purely purist and traditional then we'd probably want to take some flint out bush with us. But flint's quite rare here in Australia, well certainly in my experience. In Northern Europe or uh, England, Scandinavia and all the rest, it's a little bit more attainable. But flint's quite difficult because you actually have to experiment quite a lot with the flint that you've got. Because you need to get flint on the correct angle so when you actually hit it, you get a nice, sharp, clean, hot spark and that'll go into your tinder and get the fire going. But this, as I said, takes a heck of a lot of time. Now, I could just go out and get some sticks, the right sticks of course, and start rubbing them together or pushing them uh, together and generate enough friction to hopefully be able to... Uh, bloody birds. Shush. <laughs> anyway, I'll continue on. <clears throat> So I could go out and get a few sticks, the correct sticks, and I could simply use friction, rub them together, and that would generate enough heat that I could then actually get some tinder going. But I've read a lot about it. I haven't given it a go myself. I did give it a go once using a, a power drill, uh, and it did work, but it's something that takes a lot of time to be able to actually harness those skills and I've read people taking up to nine hours before they can actually generate a, enough heat to be able to get the tinder going. So I prefer to use something a little bit more modern. Now we'll start off with the cheapest end or the cheap end of the spectrum and obviously this is the humble, the humble match. Now here in Australia we have what they're called safety matches or safe matches. And basically, this means that the tip of the match, and I'll, I'll, I will zoom it in uh, to give you a closer look, is actually covered in a film. Now, this means that I can't get the match and just simply strike it on the Land Rover and it will start or catch a light. The reason for this is, and it's actually quite interesting, I've read up on it, is if I have a heap of matches in a box and I'm driving along and they're rattling just by those matches rubbing together can be enough to actually cause the matches to combust and then you've got a whole box of matches going up in flames inside your Land Rover which naturally is going to cause the electrics to burn too because any chance they have to burn they will uh, they'll release the smoke so that's that's why we've got safety matches now these are fantastic, cheap, cheap as chips, you know, under a dollar, you can pick up a box of matches. But what I've found is if you're traveling in a tropical environment or an area of high humidity, it actually tends to sweat due to the condensation. And there's gunpowder in here. And 
the moisture gets into the gunpowder so then when you go to strike it it just simply falls apart now there's a way of getting around that all you need to do is simply get a bit of cotton wool and by putting the cotton wool inside the matchbox and making sure that they're layered correctly this will actually help to absorb a bit of the condensation it, it won't fix it completely but it will help to uh, remediate the problem now one more thing on on matches if you are really hard pressed for cash and but you just want to get out go on a hiking trip or a, um, a land rover adventure of some kind it doesn't mean that you have to go out and spend even more money and get yourself a fancy pack of waterproof matches not at all you can turn these into these and I'm going to be able to show you how to do that in a future video when I'm back in Tasmania with Damon because I don't have a 12 gauge shotgun here but you need a 12 gauge shotgun or someone who's got one and you need a couple spent cartridges don't try and use the full cartridges you can't get as many matches in them waterproof matches are a fantastic option they're light they're easy they're cheap but once again they're not completely and utterly waterproof as I've found they've got wax on the outside on the majority of them this can break down over time so there's something that you want to check before you go if you've had them quite a while it's be better off just to chuck them in the bin uh, and get a new pack mind you I've had these a couple years and I keep them in a nice sealed tin and they've lasted pretty well so waterproof matches aren't a bad one to go for one of the problems is with waterproof matches though if you've got a lot of wind you can get the supposed wind resistant ones but um, if they're re if it's really windy then obviously it's going to blow it out either way now this is something of interest too and I've had a couple of these over the years now now you can get the magnesium block and this here is obviously magnesium you've then got flint on top now the problem I find with that is you've got to make sure it's in a dry environment I had one and I think I left it in the car and it was on the floor and it stayed there for a couple months and I just forgot about it the car was parked up and I'd been away for work and I came back and it was almost completely corroded but by using a bit of sandpaper I was able to get the oxidation off it uh, or the where it's actually turned into a white powder and kept working for a while this one's one I picked up which I think is actually much much better in a survival situation we've got the magnesium here and we've got the flint here but obviously as you can see this is wood uh, I believe it's I think it's Jarrah which is a typical hardwood found here in Western Australia I've also got my little tin striker here too now the great thing about this particularly if you're in a cold temperate environment like Tasmania or um, probably the moors of England no doubt is it's really hard to find dry tinder to actually get your fire started by simply using my pocket knife I can actually scrape off some really fine shards off this piece of wood and I can actually use the wood to get the fire going and I've still got my flint and I've still got my magnesium now the magnesium typically if your wood or your uh, tinder is a little bit wet you just want to shave off just enough to make a little tiny um, pile and always do it on a bit of a rock otherwise you're going to lose it in the soil or the sand this will burn with enough ferocity to obviously be able to get that wet bark or those wet leaves or slightly damp and actually get them going if it's dry and you've managed to get um, particularly oh if you've got some cotton or something cotton wool or some very fine sort of grass dry grass the flint will be enough to actually get that going provided you can get a nice uh, nice good spark off your bit of flint now this was about $20 Australian so it's not not a huge expense but it still is a bit and the great thing about this is it will last you a lifetime pretty much I've had this uh, four years and I pretty much use it every time I go camping um, 
I always keep one in the car uh, because I tend to forget and it's got me out of trouble. Okay so another alternative option compared to the old trusted flint is you can go for something a bit fancier. You can actually go for a cigarette lighter, a proper cigarette lighter, none of that plastic stuff. This one here is an Imco and this was, or Imco was, a Austrian company that specialised in making cigarette lighters from the late 1800s up until a few years ago. Now I'm a big fan of the Imco lighter. Uh, Imco is spelt I-M-C-O so I believe I'm saying that right. Um, I've had a number of Zippo lighters over the years but the fact is with the Zippo I find them to be quite temperamental when you're actually out in a remote area. You actually have to fill them up with lighter fluid every couple of days because particularly in a hot environment it evaporates really quickly because the cotton that actually absorbs the lighter fluid isn't actually sealed off properly so it just evaporates out into the atmosphere. The flint doesn't last as long as it should uh, with the Zippo lighters too and it is quite cumbersome when you're actually trying to light something other than a cigar or a cigarette and this is where the Imco lighter really comes into its own. Here we are the Imco cigarette lighter. It's nickel plated so it's rust resistant. Now these were originally started being manufactured I think prior to World War One or at the start of World War One and they were used by the Austrian and uh, Hungarian army at that point in time. Later in the 19, late 1930s uh, and 1940s it was used by the Wehrmacht. Now it's got a really nice mechanism on top here to actually light it, light the uh, flame. I just simply push down and I've got a nice strong flame. Now the reason why I've got a nice strong flame is because of the slits around the top here and this causes for air to be drawn in and to get the maximum uh, intensity out of the flame itself so it's very very effective. Now I just simply push on this here and that extinguishes it. Now this has a party trick, a really cool party trick that's really handy if you're camping. You can actually pull the bottom of the lighter out here and there you have it. Now how is that useful? Well I'll show you. I just simply light it and I've got myself a candle which is if you're hiking quite handy and I find it really handy. It's just gone out because it's a bit windy. I know. Really handy if you're wanting to try and light a camping stove or if you're trying to get in through some sticks and actually light a fire that way. So that's really handy too. The mechanism is easily accessible by simply pulling the is easily accessible by pulling the base of the lighter out. There's a button on the bottom here that you press. There you go, just took a little bit of effort and you've got your mechanism inside here. Standard lighter flint goes in there and to put it back together you just simply close this down push this in and hey presto you're done. To top it up with lighter fluid you just simply take the base cap off here and you've got your cotton inside. Now you can actually put a spare wick in here too and that's another really good feature of the lighter. As I mentioned before this lighter was designed for the um, well designed to be used in a survival situation and was used as I mentioned by the Austrian and Hungarian army during World War One. It was designed as a trench lighter uh, that's that's what some people called it and so it was meant to be able to be used for long periods of time very little maintenance. Now the lighter fluid that I've actually put in here I put in about two or three weeks ago and it's still working fine as you can see perfectly good flame right there. So that's pretty impressive. You don't get that with a Zippo lighter. With the Zippo you have to top it up every couple of days because the actual cotton isn't sealed uh, as it is here and the lighter fluid just evaporates. So Imco lighter, very interesting bit of kit. Now these Imco lighters aren't overly expensive. I actually picked this up on eBay for $50 Australian, which would probably be about 25 pounds. Uh, this lighter here, I'm, I'm not too sure how old it is, but it would definitely be in excess of probably 30, 40 years old, but it works fine. 
and you can get pretty much all the parts you need for it. So it's really, really handy and it is a welcome addition to the kit that I've already got. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Fire is really important and in my mind it's the best form to cook on and you're just not camping if you don't have a fire. It's just not quite the same. But anyway, once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please click on the subscribe button below. And if you want to support the generation of content here at Seriously Series, as always, please feel free to join us on Patreon. Anyway, I'll catch you later on.